Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stephen Breach coming to you, uh, talking to you a little bit about the coverage of the TNA trial that went down yesterday. Um, I believe it was in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, is where the case is going down. This is Billy Corgan against Dixie Carter, um, and basically because of this being um, an open case to see who is in charge of TNA and who's going to be running the company, uh, Billy Corgan has made... Um, multiple loans into the company and basically says because of these loans uh, that he should be you know gaining control of this company um, and that behind his back um, TNA hid a lot of the numbers and um, just basically did some bad business deals um, to each other in the long run um, basically it came out yesterday that on three separate occasions Billy Corrigan um, bailed out TNA when they were not able to cover their bills for tapings. Um, and I believe the number that was out yesterday was, um, it, it was it was still a guess because the, the number was supposed to be kept secret, but Billy Corrigan's lawyer, um, through a slip of the tongue, did say $1.8 million is how much is owed um, or how much is invested by Billy Corgan into TNA. Um, I'm not the best at math, but let's just say the number is $1.8 million, and he bailed them out on three separate occasions with three separate loans of $600,000. Just honestly shows you how much money Billy Corgan has. Um, back in the day when I was in high school, um, I did listen to the Smashing Pumpkins. I can tell you that I owned... Two of their albums, uh, neither one that I could remember, and, and I didn't care to look them up. I remember um, the song Tonight Tonight, um, the, 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 the Rat in a Cage song. I remember um, another song with him like hanging out the window of a car doing donuts. I, I, I don't know. I would probably never listen to that music ever again. But I can remember buying those CDs. One of them was a double CD, which was a Rage uh, back in the late 90s. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it just shows you how much money th that he has to be able to dump $1.8 million into a company that he's been a wrestling fan for a long time and he's been a businessman as well. He should know is is a bad company to invest in. 2005, 2006, maybe put some money into this company, but today, 2016, no, no way, no chance in hell um, would, I, would I even put this in there. I mean, just the figure of $1.8 million being invested into TNA blows my mind. I mean, that's $600,000 a shot for the loans. If me and you work together and you forget your lunch one day, I might give you six bucks to go to, go to go to Subway and get lunch. You forget your lunch the next day, I'm going to give you six more bucks. Now I'll loan you $12. On that third day, you show up and you forgot your lunch again and you don't have any money. It's only six more dollars to make $18. But I'm starting to think maybe you're taking advantage of me. Or maybe there's more to the story that I don't know. I'm not giving you that third six dollars. You're on your own. I mean, that's just the way that I feel about $6, $12, $18, and he's got $1.8 million. And um, we've already got um, the Fight uh, is it the fight, Net, fight Network. I was going to call it the Fight Company. Just some big building with people just sitting around ready to fight in there. But um, they are in Canada, and they air TNA up north. Um, they came to a deal a little while ago. Um, they've already said that, hey, we will invest into this company and put a new owner in charge. That They'll put a new CEO in charge of the company if Billy Corgan is paid back for his loan. So basically, they're going to put money into the company to pay back Billy Corgan. So Billy Corgan will step back, go away, no longer be the president of TNA, no longer be invested in the company. And, and they will run it for the foreseeable future. Some people think that that is because they want to run the company until its dying day, which is going to come sooner than later. And when it does die, 
they will own the tape library, which is the most valuable thing that TNA has. If you think about it, they do have television, which is one of the hardest things um, to acquire. You can look at Jeff Jarrett and Global Force Wrestling. Um, you know, New Japan has a deal um, on a network where they run reruns of old shows, and uh, that seems to work for them. But besides for WWE, no one has anything more than basically public access television, um, you know, airing wrestling shows for them, and your local indies and things like that. No one's really paying money for wrestling, even though there's uh, millions of wrestling fans throughout this country who will watch wrestling if it's good. Uh, there's just a, there's just a thought about it that people will not pay to advertise on wrestling because there's a, I, I guess you can say the best way to say it is there's a, a, a low thought of the, the common wrestling fan not being able to afford Cadillacs, not being able to, you know, you know, Coke and Pepsi, they don't, they don't sponsor. I mean, think about well, who sponsors Monday Night Raw over the, over the years. You've got those like Hungry Man dinners that Booker T used to do commercial for. You got Chef Boy or D um, with like the Mankind commercials from back in the day. Um, if you if you even go back to watching Superstars, um, and you had Lord Alfred Hayes at the end of the show uh, with those, you know, uh, uh, what would he always say? He said, um, "Son of a bitch," I can hear it in my mind. Um, but he had those things about who was sponsoring the shows, and they were always like low rent kids toys um, that couldn't afford like a real commercial that just bought this little thing where they just basically put the picture of, of the toy up on the screen. Go buy it. That's that's just about it. But um, I, I I'm not sure what's going to be going down with TNA. Basically, in this case, you know, Billy Corgan's lawyer laid out the case, basically saying that the company owes in debt. Well, I guess maybe the best way to say it is the company is worth one-tenth of the debt that they owe. And we've heard numbers thrown out all over the place. They owe their insurance company. They owe American Express. Um, they owe talent. Um, they, they owe um, the production people. They're not paying people all over the board. And the one thing that honestly came out yesterday that was a real minor uh, or a real minor note was that Dixie Carter and her husband Serge are owed back pay from the company so at least at least they're not paying themselves before they're paying these other people um it's not like Dixie Carter and her husband are going to be going into the poorhouse um but at least they're not paying their salaries before they pay everybody else and there's 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 you got to think why are these people working for free um i i don't think it's because of the fact that they're under contract because part of the contract is you got to get paid but part of these people might be thinking that if, even if they leave tna um you know tna puts them on national television um that's probably getting them indie dates um, you know, throughout the country and, and fulfilling their, their dates that they, that they wrestle throughout the rest of the year, because you got to be thinking that TNA probably has tapings, I think once a month. Um, so that's only one day of, of work, uh, for most of these guys. And that's, that's not a lot. Um, but I honestly don't know. I mean, there was talk last week, um, that you were going to see a large surge of wrestlers from TNA, uh, declare themselves free agents because of the fact they hadn't gotten paid, whether that means, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, um, Bobby Lashley, James Storm. Um, you know, there are guys in TNA that are worth something. Um, but I don't know if there's really... Um, I, I, I don't think that... Um, I, I don't think it's really a valuable place to start a wrestling company for the fact that there's been talks that the, their deal in the UK, uh, they've been losing a lot of viewers over there. Their, their ratings are going down. That deal that's going to be coming up in January more than likely is either not going to be get renewed or is going to be cut uh, drastically. Uh, everybody remembers that, uh, I believe it's called Sony 6, a company over in India, invested in the company, signed them to a TV deal. Part of the deal was that they were supposed to go to, to um, India and wrestle a tour. Last year, they pulled out almost at the very last minute due to the fact that they thought that it was not safe 
due to um, terrorism acts across the country. And they were cool with it. They said, we understand. We'll see you next year. Well, it's, it's almost Halloween. You got November and you got December to put together a tour of India uh, and shoot television. And there's no talks of it. How happy is this company over in India going to be that they're basically getting blown off for a second year in a row? And there's no real talks about what the numbers are in India. I know WWE has been trying to get into India. You know, you've had um, Cole Cabana uh, talked about it uh, on uh, The Art of Wrestling. Uh, the, the fact that India with, you know, millions of mi millions of people, um, one of the largest um, basis of just people um we, we've seen them go over there we saw them do um that uh shoot i can't remember what rest like it was like an offset of tna i think jeff jarrett went over there and started it was like rock king or something like that people have been trying to get things going in india because the fact like, there's so many people somebody's got to watch the show and, and nothing's really been able to get anything off the ground but like cole cabana talked about the fact that they just set up a ring in the middle of a field and they have hundreds of thousands of people show up. Um, I, I think that he said he didn't know if anybody you know, paid to get a ticket or if they made any money off the fact. But uh, he was there and he got paid. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know how much money that, 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 that company pays into TNA. But there's people who say that once that company makes their payment in January, that TNA will be able to pay off a large amount of their debt and won't be in as dead as they are now. Um, if anybody doesn't know what the judge is trying to figure out and what the judge will make a ruling on come Monday, is that the company is in insolvent. Insolvent basically means that they owe too much money to the point where they'll never be able to come back. I don't know if that means that they're going to force TNA to go into bankruptcy, if they're going to force the Carters out of TNA and, and put somebody in charge of the company, which or make them sell the company, which doesn't seem like it, it would make much sense. If you want to run a company into the ground, run the company into the ground. I mean, if the people want to keep coming to work for you, let them keep coming to work. But um, I, I don't see how Billy Corgan it wins out in this. Maybe he's just airing a lot of dirty laundry. Um, I don't know if they just say, hey, Billy, you know, you've invested, you know, this amount of money, which some people say is $1.8 million dollars. You own the place now, and you know just run it like it's your own. Um, I, I'm not sure, but um, you know we've we've heard that yes, WWE and TNA have talked uh, and and made offers uh, on the company as well as the tape library. Uh, WWE uh, made one offer to the company, which I believe was was turned down, or maybe TNA took too long to get back to the table. That by the time that they came back with a second offer, the offer was lower. Whether that means that they felt like they were getting used by Dixie Carter um, to, you know, sh you know, try and sell the the tape library, trying to say that WWE had offered this much, so if anybody else wanted it, they would have to, to pay more. They lowered it, and they added a no compete clause, which basically says that they can't go out and start another wrestling company from scratch and compete against WWE since WWE basically bought this library and is helping pay off the debt that they are in. Um, I don't know. When it comes down to it, WCW closed and nobody wanted it. Uh, WWE was able to acquire the, um, the the naming rights as well as the tape library and a few of the, the wrestlers under contract because of the fact nobody else wanted it at that time. Um, WWE um, was investing into ECW uh, to the point of where they filed for bankruptcy. Um, the bankruptcy court sold the tape library and the rights to WWE to pay off the investment that they had made to pay them back. Uh, as of right now, um, unless there is some sort of secret thing that's gone down, WWE has never invested in TNA. Um, I think that we have found out that the Fight Network is the people that paid for the tapings at Bound for Glory. There was a rumor that maybe WWE had done it to sort of sneak in just like they had done with ECW. But, um, I mean, this story has no ending. We'll have to see on Monday what goes down. I don't even really know what it's going to be, but we will see come Monday. Peace out, everybody.